Good afternoon. Thank you all for coming today. It's now my pleasure to introduce Gary Park, Chairman of the New York Philharmonic. Thank you. It's uh, nice to welcome everyone here. It's a very exciting day in the life of the New York Philharmonic. I, indeed, today we have the pleasure of making two announcements, not just one. Of course, we're going to be rolling out uh, the season of 2011, 2012, and telling you all about that. The second thing is we're going to unveil the New York Philharmonic Digital Archives. This pays tribute to our celebrated past as a leader in our field, making available to the world vast amount of information from the archives of the New York Philharmonic. And I've got to tell you, it's a lot of really cool stuff, as you're going to hear about and see. Uh, before we get underway with that, I'd like to thank WQXR, uh, the radio station of the New York Philharmonic, for hosting this, for bringing us here together in the green space, and for making it available to us also to have a live webcast. Uh, the combination of a bold vision and an energy behind the programming uh, is so important in a celebration, and it does reflect the energy of our maestro, Alan Gilbert, the music director of the New York Philharmonic. He is the Yoko Nagai Chastina uh, chair. Uh, he's presided over the renewal and the excitement uh, that's been taking place around the Philharmonic now for, this is Alan's third meeting such as this, a time to describe and to uh, lay out what his plans are and his vision for an entire season. I'd like to also mention uh, that today Alan will be joined, of course, with our president and executive director, Zarin Mehta. The two of them will take you through the whole of uh, the program and tell you about the excitement that's coming. All of us at the Philharmonic are, of course, very grateful to have Credit Suisse as our global sponsor. Uh, it really is a very strong partnership. It's a very important part of what leads us to do, be able to do things in New York and around the world. Uh, just recently, we renewed the contract that will extend for yet another three years. It is a wonderful partnership, and it's the sort of institution we, as a cultural institution, like to be associated with. It's quality with quality. I'd also like to make sure to thank the uh, Philharmonic's active board of directors, the staff of the New York Philharmonic, and of course, importantly, the musicians of the New York Philharmonic, those who make the beautiful music every time every one of us has the good fortune and the pleasure to hear them play. Um, we are looking forward to another exciting season. So now, it is my pleasure to introduce uh, Zarin Mehta, the president, and New York's maestro, Alan Gilbert. Thank you. There we are. Thank you. Good. Thank you all. Thanks for coming, and it's great to welcome you all here. The distinguished members of the media, our good friends and, and guests, as well as everybody who's watching on our live webcast. It's, a, it's an exciting space to be in, and I've been to a performance here, and, and the fact that we're able to go out with technology and, and reach <coughs> The, the, the interested musicians around the world and people who follow what we do is, is really, really exciting, I think. Um, Zarin, why don't we uh, just get started and start talking about what we have to present. I, we were just backstage uh, marveling, I think it's fair to say, at the fact that this is the third time. I remember the first year, I, there was a part of me that could scarcely believe that I was able to announce a season of the New York Philharmonic, and then last year, I had a remembrance of what it had been like the year before. And it's not that it's normal, but it's starting to feel like life as usual. So here we are again. Life is never as usual with the New York Philharmonic, especially with Alan. <laughs> uh, you know, as he said, this is the third season. It's many more for me here. But each season to me is such a, as they say in French, a lancement. Uh, there's something that you feel is exciting about it. And I was thinking back as to the sort of things that we've done in these past two years has been quite extraordinary. It's a year and a half, but we've planned two years. Uh, we're announcing the third season. We're working on the fourth season. And 
you know, there are so many highlights that sort of stick in my mind from the first time Alan came and actually did a concert when we introduced him. He did a concert at Central Park where we had a huge, huge crowd that came to welcome him, where the orchestra greeted him. Um, and it's not just the things that you've all been hearing and reading about the grand macabre and craft. I mean, all that is extraordinary things that he's brought as new things to us. But the method of working on a Haydn symphony or a Schubert unfinished, I was sitting next to a rather prominent Englishman, I don't know if I ever told you this, at our London concert where we did the bag three pieces for orchestra at the Barbican. And when it finished, he turned to me and he says, I don't know an orchestra that could play it like this. And that's all he said. And that meant so much to me and it meant so much for the effect that Alan has already had on this orchestra and of course on the city. And I'm just thrilled that he's here and he's working forward in the way we all expected and it's better. I was also reflecting on the fact that as we're talking about future seasons, we're also talking about as if he's been here forever and saying, you know, we did the Schoenberg Pelias and Melisande in the first season, maybe we should think about doing it again. And you did it in Paris recently. And so we start talking about that. So it, it feels like you've been here such a long time. And what are you good, bringing It's good you to for know you feel year? that way, Zaren. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I can't imagine it without him. <laughs> well, no, that's very kind. And, and, and for me, what, what I found striking, if, if I can just take a moment for personal reflection, is the fact that we've done enough and we've gone through enough that it's possible to look back and have meaningful thoughts about right. where we've come from and where we're going from now. Um, it's, um, I remember, I remember the, the planning that went into the first season and the ideas that came up and the hopes and the aspirations we had and, and this, this, this thought of building up a rapport with the audience and, and, and increasing uh, the trust that, that exists between the orchestra and, and the audience and this, this sense that if we present everything with sincerity, if we choose pieces that we really believe in, then we, w the hope is that, that people will start to really believe in what we do simply because we do it. And I think that will continue to develop, but I, I, really, I really believe it's already started to happen. And, and it's, it's so gratifying and, you know, I, it's, not, it's not really about me in a sense, but I remember hearing someone say recently, oh, that's a real Alan Gilbert program. And that was, that was surprising to me because I don't think of myself as a dogmatic programmer. I really try to find pieces that I love and, and combine them in ways that are meaningful and telling for, for the public that we serve. And if such a thing has started to exist as an Alan Gilbert program, then, then um, you know, nothing could make me happier. Well, I think back to the end of the first season where we had an extraordinary new piece of Lindbergh, Magnus, with Misa Solemnis. Nobody would really think about doing that. And when we saw it on paper, it sort of looked at it and said, well, how is this going to work? And when you went to the concert and you brought those 10,000 people along with it, I mean, that was a real, to me, a, a step forward in how we program and how we challenge and how we challenge the listener and it's working. That's all I can say, and I'm delighted. Well, finally, yeah. I mean, I, I couldn't, I couldn't uh, agree more. And that particular piece of Magnus, who's sitting right here, will welcome him to the stage in, in a bit. Um, I think it's one of his pieces that will really endure. And the, the, the aspect that really, I think, was clear in that particular program, which started with Debussy, Afternoon of a Fawn, and ended up very far away with Magnus's piece was that there is a real continuum and there's no division, there's no separation between all the different kinds of music that we play. Exactly, and I think that's what we're gonna talk about for next season.